千里之行，始于足下。A journey of a thousand miles begins beneath the feet. We now gather in the Tao to travel the journey together. Welcome to Tao Talks with Derek Lin, where we take a deep dive into the Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu. As ever, I would like to extend a warm welcome to one and all. Thank you for joining us. I want to invite you to center your thoughts and direct your attention to this moment in time, to the here and now, to be fully present and mindfully aware, as we all ready ourselves for this sacred process in the Tao with one another. So this is a story that I call "Be the Buddha." Once upon a time in ancient China, there was this temple that had a large statue of the Buddha in its main hall. This temple was not the same as every other temple. You see, because Over the years, it became known for miracles. People talked about this. People said that, "Listen, the Buddha will grant your wish if you come to this temple to pray." And of course, everybody is like, "Really? Is that true?" This made it so popular that the monks at the temple they had to hire a guard to watch over everything, to look over. All the visitors coming and going provide assistance to them. So this guard at the temple, he saw the stream of all these people coming and going, and he thought about that it must be extremely difficult to handle so many prayers. He could not imagine how the Buddha could hear all these prayers. And be able to grant the wishes in order for the miracles to occur. He thought this must be a really difficult thing to do. So one day he knelt before the Buddha in order to say a prayer of his own. Here's what he said. He said, "Great Buddha, I have only one wish, and I wish to know what it is like." To be you, is it not a heavy burden to listen to all the people who come here? I wish to help you with this great responsibility. Can you make me more like you, so I can share the burden? The man was not expecting to hear an answer, but much to his surprise, the Buddha responded. In his mind, the Buddha replied. Yes, I can grant you this wish, but you must agree to one condition. You may listen to all the prayers directed to me, but only if you say and do nothing, no matter what you see or hear. The man heard this and thought, "Well, this will be easy. Yeah, I can listen, but I don't need to say anything. I don't need to do anything." So he readily agreed. The Buddha then said, "There is a small place behind the statue, a space where you can hide. If you hide there behind the statue, I will let you hear the prayers. You will also be able to see everything." From the vantage point of that place, without being seen yourself. So the guard didn't know about this. He went and looked behind the statue and found it was true. There was a place behind the statue where he could hide. So he hid there to listen and observe quietly, exactly as instructed by the Buddha. So many people came and went. The man indeed heard the prayers, whether it was said out loud or silent. He heard them, just as the Buddha said he would. 
he found that many of the requests were quite reasonable, but some were definitely not reasonable and some were outrageous. Regardless of how reasonable he thought it was, through it all, the guard kept quiet. He honored the Buddha's condition. A few days later, there was a wealthy merchant who came to the temple. He set his back aside and he prayed for material success. And after he was done, he left still thinking materialistic thoughts and forgetting all about the back that he left behind. The guard saw it all from the hiding place. He wanted to call out to the merchant like, hey, hey, you, you forgot your back, come back. But he stopped himself from saying anything because he remembered his agreement with the Buddha. Shortly thereafter, Another person came in the temple. A poor man came into the great hall before the Buddha. He had failed badly in business. He suffered a huge setback. So in his prayer, he asked the Buddha to help him and his family through this hard time. As he was leaving, he caught sight of the back that was left behind. He opened it and he found it contained a lot of money. He looked around, but he was alone in the main hall. Well, clearly this money was meant for him, he thought. It must be the Buddha answering his prayers. It was true miracles occurred in this temple. He thanked the Buddha and then he left to go home. Again, the guard saw it all from his hiding place. He wanted to call out to this man to tell him that, stop, listen, this bag doesn't belong to you, it belongs to someone else. But he stopped himself from saying anything because he remembered his agreement with the Buddha. Shortly thereafter, a young man came before the Buddha. He was about to go on a long trip. So he prayed to the Buddha for the blessing of a safe journey. Then he got ready to leave. As he was about to leave, the merchant came running back in, looking frantically for his bag. The merchant saw that the bag was no longer where he left it. Then he saw the young man about to leave. He put two and two together. It seemed pretty obvious. The young man took the bag. So he grabbed the young man and accused him of stealing. The young man pushed back. I had no idea what he's talking about. A physical altercation ensued. And the situation quickly got out of hand as they were shoving back and forth. The guard could not tolerate this disruption of the harmony in that sacred temple. So from behind the statue, he said, stop. The two men froze up, startled by what they thought had to be the Buddha's voice. They turned to look at the statue. The guard continued speaking as if he was the Buddha and told the merchant the young man had nothing to do with his back. The back, he explained, was taken by the man who left right before the young man came in. So both the merchant and the young man thanked the Buddha the merchant left in a big hurry because he wanted to go, go after the poor man who had his back. The young man also left in a hurry because he had to catch the ferry that would take him on the first leg of his journey because he was going on a long journey. So the guard was feeling pretty satisfied with himself. He felt that, well, I have done a good deed. Then the Buddha appeared. The Buddha said, you can come out of the hiding place now. You have broken the agreement, so you are no longer qualified to hear prayers. The guard came out, but he felt like he had to explain himself. Great Buddha, surely you can see that I had no choice but to speak up. 
he said, it was a misunderstanding after all. And the young man, you see, was unjustly accused by the merchant. I spoke the truth only to clarify the situation. Why would that be wrong? I didn't do anything wrong. The Buddha said, you do not understand the intricate connections of karma. The merchant already had more wealth than he could use. And he was intending to spend the money in the bag in gambling. The poor man had lost everything. And he desperately needed the money to feed his starving children. It dawned on the guard that perhaps he made a mistake. He thought about it and then he asked, oh, well, what about the young man? At least I cleared the false accusation against him. The Buddha said, his is perhaps the most tragic fate. If you did not speak up, his argument with the merchant would delay him sufficiently so he would miss his boat and that would actually save his life. Now he's on board a ship that is sinking into the ocean. His fellow passengers will be saved. They will be all right, but he does not know how to swim. He will drown, and that will end a life full of unrealized potential. The end. So that is a story of Be the Buddha, and let's talk about the story. So I want to share with everyone that when Tao masters tell stories, they do not just tell the story and then let people figure it out. So traditionally, in the great oral traditions in the Tao, they explain the multiple layers of meaning in the story because without a Tao-centric explanation, it is possible that the listeners will misunderstand what the message is trying to convey. So the question for everyone to ponder and what the message that some people can take out of it is, is this. The question is, is the story telling us we should always say and do nothing? Because after all, we don't know all the karmic connections. So the answer to that question, as the Tao master would explain after the story is, no, the key to this story is that we should not act out of ignorance or surface appearance or partial knowledge. Because think about this, there is a Tao teaching about non-interference. Does it mean that we, as Tao cultivators, would never interfere with anything, even when it is clear that we should? And the answer is no. A Tao cultivator will learn, first and foremost, to, ref to refrain from dealing in absolutes, like never, always, etc. Life is shades of gray, and the skill in the Tao is to recognize when something should be done or when we, we should simply observe. So this story is a warning about the human tendency to interfere excessively, particularly before we really understand the full situation. So this is actually a way to illustrate the principle of non-interference. So the guard was able to hear the prayers, but could not see the myriad causes and effects. This is similar to a real world situation for both, for you and me, for everybody. We often cannot perceive karmic connections with clarity. We too, like the guard, we can see, we cannot see all the causes and effects. Sometimes we can, often we cannot. So we're no different from the guard in that respect. Now, karma itself 
is like the heavenly net. Nothing gets through. In the long run, everything balances out. A lot of times we cannot see that and therefore we don't feel like we can just stand by and let it happen. And we tend to go in the opposite direction too much. So we interfere rashly before we fully understand what is happening. So how about the Buddha? In the story, the Buddha is like the great carpenter. The Buddha has the understanding of the intricate causes and effects. That means the great carpenter is able to cut wood with precision to the exact length required. And the metaphor is very useful in this case because there is a length that should not be too long or too short. If you are unskillful, if you are not the great carpenter, you can cut not enough or you can cut too much, which will render that piece of wood useless. This is in addition to the possibility of cutting yourself, injuring your own hand. So we are not the great carpenter. We should not act on behalf of the Tao. Sometimes there are very, we have this very strong tendency that like we should do something and then we realize later on that well we didn't really know what we were doing so this um what we need is much more of a balanced approach or the path of moderation and let me explain what the sages would actually do the sages understand the teaching from this particular chapter that those who substitute for the great carpenter to cut it is rare that they do not hurt their own hands this does not prevent the sages themselves from taking action. They still do take action. However, they observe. They will, they will take a moment to understand the situation. Then, after a while, because of the skills that they have accumulated, they understand what it takes, what is really required. Maybe what is required is to continue observing. That's the non-action part of Wu Wei. Then, occasionally, they need to take an action that is minimal, that is a nudge, that is just maybe a smile, maybe just a tap that has the most impact on the situation to cause it to resolve in a positive way. Minimal actions. This idea is pervasive throughout the Tao mindset within ancient Chinese culture. If you think about the concept uh, when it applies uh, physically to real life situations, think about, for instance, pressure points. There are pressure points that you can apply some pressure on that with just the right amount of force, it'll relieve a lot of pain. Same kind of idea. Sometimes just a little bit of action can make a huge amount of difference, but not before we fully understand what is going on. And in most cases, we want to watch our tendency to interfere, which is the, the whole point of this, of this story. To be the Buddha, you must think like the Buddha. Our meeting has come to an end, but the journey continues on. Let us all travel safely so we can meet again. Until next time, may the Tao fill you with peace and happiness. <laughs>